What's up guys, this is Bao with Design Craft Workshop. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this jig to help me cut dados, rabbits, and half laps. Perfect every single time. Let's go. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Thanks. This type of joint can be made with different tools. And one of those common ones are dado stacks. But the thing about dado stacks is one, it's expensive. And also in some countries, you can't even buy a dado stack for your table saw. And some table saws in the US, you can't even install a dado stack. The next tool you can use is a router. And these are very versatile tools. The thing about doing dados with a router freehand is if you're doing multiple dados, you're gonna have to set up your guide each and every single time and mark your dados with the piece of wood that you need to fit. So this jig is going to help me create repeatable dados or half laps each and every single time, no matter where I'm going to route out that dado or the half lap. So let's get to it. For this project, I'm just going to use some scrap plywood. I'm using three quarter inch walnut plywood. I know it doesn't look like walnut plywood is actually birch plywood, but just imagine that I'm cutting walnut plywood. All right. And there's that walnut plywood, just like magic. That's how it happens. You're not going to need a lot of plywood. I used maybe about half a sheet of plywood. I did use a tiny bit of half inch plywood for the bottoms and you'll see that later. If you are interested in building this jig yourself, I do have a set of plans in the link in the description. Go ahead and download that. On that plan, you'll see all of the dimensions for all the parts that I'm making. The only thing that's not included is the parts for the knobs. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick some up yourself on Amazon. Once I got all the widths cut out, I went ahead and cross cut them to the appropriate length using my cross cut sled. I'm cutting these down to about 27 inches. Again, the link in the description below will have all the dimensions for you. And finally, these are all the pieces that you need for the rails. I'm going to go ahead and make the knobs on my CNC. You may not be able to do this yourself if you don't have a CNC, but you can always purchase the plastic knobs available on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to pick some up. You need six for this jig, but that really depends on how big or how wide you make this jig. So there's some flexibility there. I created little tabs to hold the knobs to the actual workpiece. So they're tiny enough where I can just simply pop them out and give it a little bit of sanding as needed. To secure the bolt inside this pocket, I'm just mixing together some epoxy. I will be using 5 16 threaded T-bolts. So I would need to make sure that the actual nuts correspond to the threaded pattern. You can use anything that you have on hand. You just gotta make sure that the threads match. Now I'm going to mark the location for me to cut out the slot for the bolts. And the slot is offset from the center. I did this because I wanted more surface area for my router to sit on. That way it would help me keep the router stable and it won't tip over as I'm making my cut. And also the knobs and the clamps won't be in the way as I'm pushing the router through. Since I need to make two of the same pieces, I'll go ahead and tape them together using the tape method. Usually I like to use CA glue for this, but I didn't have any CA glue. So I'll just use some spray adhesive and it works the same way. If you've never seen this method, you're essentially just using the tape as a barrier. And the glue will stick to the tape instead of the workpiece. That way later on you could peel your workpiece off and it won't get stuck together. I'm going to use my drill press and a Forstner bit to create the rounded ends. 
If you don't have a drill press, you can always use your power drill with the Forstner bit. You get the same results pretty much. A little word of caution before you proceed with this cut. You don't have to do it this way. You can always just use a jigsaw to complete the cut for your slot. I'm doing this way because it's faster for me because I've done it before and I'm comfortable with it. So if you're not comfortable with completing your slot this way on the table saw, don't do it. I'm not cutting the piece all the way through on the table saw. I'm going to clean up the rest with my jigsaw. Again, you can just use your jigsaw to make this cut. It may not be clean without a guide, but you get the same result. Now I can test to see if the bolt slides nicely through that, and it does. Here's the beauty of the tape method. I was able to make these two pieces in one set of cuts, and then the tape just simply peels off. Now this is the only glue up that you'll need. I'm gluing the three quarter inch piece to the half inch piece. The half inch piece has a larger slot where the T-bolts will ride in. Once the epoxy was set, I'll go ahead and sand it down with 120 grit sandpaper. I'm not doing anything aggressive with the sanding. I don't want to accidentally expose some of the plies underneath of the veneer. I would say stay between 100 to 120 grit. Don't go anything lower than that. Now you can go ahead and assemble the jig. You want to make sure that the larger slot is located at the bottom of your rail. And then you can simply slide in your guides, use a washer, and then tighten your knobs. I'm only installing the two main guides for this jig for now. The center guide, I'm going to leave off and I'll show you how it works later on. You can secure this to your jig now if you want to. I'm just going to leave it off. So I got the jig assembled and now I'll show you the different ways for you to make your cuts. Before we get to that, I want to take the time to talk about some of the key components on this jig and what do you really have to focus on whenever you're building it. The main thing is you want to make sure that the two rails on the top here, the edge on the inside, both of these need to be pretty straight. Well, really straight because you're referencing your router bit off of these two edge. And if there is a bow, then it's going to follow that bow. And you want to make sure that your rails are nice and flushed. You don't want any imperfections there because you're referencing this edge here onto your workpiece and it should butt up nice and tight. The way that I made the jig is if you ever accidentally route into the jig, you can simply just replace the piece and it'll work just fine. You just have to uh, make sure that everything is nice and straight whenever you remake it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert a piece of plywood in between the workpiece and the jig and that will give me a little gap to start my uh, routing. That way it doesn't bite into the jig itself. What you'll notice here is the rail is pretty tall for most of the uh, plywood that I typically use or you might typically use. So for instance, if you want to route out this piece of three quarter inch plywood, you notice that there's a gap. What you would do is you would simply stick in a support piece underneath to lift up the work piece so that it butts up against the guide. And then you can make your cut. The key thing here is you want to make sure that you secure everything nicely to your workbench or to the actual piece so that the jig doesn't move uh, whenever you're making your cut. So that's very important to get good results with this jig. To really make this work, you're going to need a router bit that has a bearing on the top. This is called a patterning bit and you want to make sure that that is the bit that you're using. These things come in various length. This is the only one that I have right now to use, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. 
All right, so the first cut that I'll show you is how to make the rabbit off the edge. The first thing you'll do is you'll butt the end of your rail onto the edge of your workpiece. And then you're gonna just take the actual piece you need to route out and align it up with the face of your workpiece here. And once I got it aligned, I'll go ahead and tighten the knobs. Then I'll just take a clamp to just to clamp it down to so make sure nothing is gonna move. Verify again, make sure that everything's still nice. You can make some adjustment now if you need to. So now I got that nice and tight up against this edge here. And then I'll just go ahead and make the cut with my router bit. You wanna make sure that you're setting it to the appropriate depth. Um, I'm just gonna cut it to maybe a quarter of an inch just to get you guys to take a look and see how it works. So now I can just place my piece here. It's nice and flush to that edge. So that's pretty much how you can create a rabbit with this jig. All right, so let's go ahead and make a dado cut. I'm just going to stick in a piece of scrap plywood as a sacrificial edge. And I'll double check to make sure everything's squared again. Then I'll just take a Okay, I'm gonna take my clamp and clamp it down. So then now I'll just take the piece of wood that I need to route out. I'll just butt it up against the edge there. Then I'll bring the other side up tight to it. Now, since I have this squared already, this side should be squared as well. Once it's nice and tight, I can go ahead and clamp everything down. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Now I can go ahead and make the route. Now I'm just go ahead and remove the jig. Now I'll go ahead and test the fit. And that is pretty much good. See there? I've made my first dado cut and it's nice and tight. Now that I already set up the jig to be secured and locked in place, I can simply just lift up the jig, move it to my next location, and I don't have to make any adjustments. I can just make my cut and it will be the exact same uh, width for my dado. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just lift it over about six inches or so. Now I'll make sure to secure it again. It's nice and secured. It's not gonna move anywhere um, as I'm making the route. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that it's done, I'll go ahead and just remove the jig. Then use my test piece. And that is nice and tight. You don't wanna tighten your jig so much that it just really makes it hard for you to install this or slide this in if you're making a bookcase or something like that. But you want it just to be nice and snug so that, you know, it, it's it's going to give you some resistance, but not too much, okay? So I can easily just plop this off. It's a little bit resistant, but and then at the same time, I can simply just plop it in, slide it back and forth if I need to. I mean, it's a little bit tight, but, but you get the picture, so, Again, I made this dado and I went to make this dado and pretty much it's the exact same fit. And that's how you can make repeatable dados no matter where you want to do it. I got these two pieces of plywood here that I'm going to create half lap joints on. Technically it's a cross lap because we're making it in the middle. The first thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and square everything up like before. Just like the, the dado before, I'm going to take the width of this board here so I can reference it off of these two edges and that will give me the width of my lap joint. Okay, so now I can go ahead and make my lap joint. I'll just put this piece back here so I can cut both laps at the same time. So I'll go ahead and make my depth adjustment I'm just going to eyeball it. 
Hopefully I got it right. Now let's go ahead and route it. As you can see with these wider lap joints, my router doesn't really have much surface area on this um, guide here to keep stable. So what I did was I created this piece, which also you could bolt these pieces in as well, um, kind of like as a guide so that my router could sit on two surfaces like so. And I wouldn't have to worry about the router uh, tipping over one way or the other. And then remove everything. So you just have your two laps here and you just simply join it together. And you got your lap joint. So there it is. All right, so let's say you make a lot of mid-century modern furniture and with mid-century modern furniture, you sometimes come across legs that are tapered. Like this one here, this is wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And you want to connect your taper leg to your stretcher with a half lap joint. So I'm gonna show you how we can use a jig to make this tapered joint. First thing you do is, again, you wanna square up all your pieces. So I got my stretcher piece or support piece for the table um, clamped down into the jig. And then I'm going to take my tapered leg. I'm going to align the top edge with the top edge of my, um, my stretcher. And then I'll go ahead and slide my other rail over. And then I'll go ahead and tighten these two sides over here. So now the two rails are following the taper on my legs and I can just go ahead and route out that half lap. First, I'll go ahead and add another clamp just to secure it down, okay. All right, so I got that cut out. Then I'll go ahead and cut this piece out here and create the half lap for it. Just gonna use a piece of plywood to support this side over here. All right, so I'll loosen this side over here and I want to make this half lap the same size as my stretcher or support piece. So then I'll go ahead and butt it up against my stretcher piece. Tighten it down, remove my stretcher piece, and then go ahead and make the route. Now here is your half lap for tapered legs. There you go. Again, I didn't set the depth appropriately for my router, so I was a little bit proud, but you get the point. You have a Half lap joint that is nice and strong for your tapered legs. Okay, so that's pretty much what there is for this jig. It is still a prototype for me. Um, it works fine the way that it is right now. I'm going to develop this a little bit more, um, kind of refine the design a little bit and make it less clunky and bulky. After finishing this jig, there are a few things that I wanted to kind of change for the next one. I'll probably use T-Tracks instead of creating this uh, groove in the back for the T-bolt. I noticed that as I'm tightening the knobs, the actual um, bolt is biting into the plywood a little bit more and it causes it to jam up. So I'm going to try to make that uh, a little bit different later on. And also that would allow me to remove this half inch piece at the bottom, which will let me just simply sit this down on top of a three quarter inch piece of plywood without having to raise up that piece of wood. But at this stage, it's working perfectly fine, doing everything that I need it to do. If you're going to make this yourself, you can always you know, make these smaller or longer, depending on what you need in your shop. I will make the plans for this available if you want to make it for your shop. And you don't really have to follow my dimensions. You can go ahead and make this longer or shorter if you need to, uh, based off of what you need. This is a little bit long, I think, for most shops. 20 inches is pretty good for me. You can make it smaller if you're dealing with smaller pieces. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Bao with Design Craft Workshop. See ya. If you like this video,
hit that like button and definitely subscribe. Thanks.